if you had to name the best camera of 2023 so far, what would you say? And I mean, you have to think about this here. There are some really great contestants. You have the Sony a7R5, you have the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, and the Fuji Film X-H2, to name a few. But none of these took home the top prize. Instead, according to Expert Imaging and Sound Association, the camera of the year is the... I don't know about you, but honestly, I'm not surprised at, at all. This is chosen as the best camera of the year. Between its incredible capabilities, the small form factor, and the great price, the no is definitely worthy of the award. But the camera of the year is just one award given out recently. Now, we're going to dive into details uh, coming up here in a bit. But for now, let's have a look at some of the rumors of some upcoming gear. Now, as you guys undoubtedly know by now, I am a iPhone guy, but that doesn't blind me from the fact that Android phones bring a lot to the table. In fact, I'll extend it all of ranch to all of you Android folks out there and talk about an Android for once. Now we've talked about it before, but <laughs> in fact, the upcoming Samsung S24 Ultra, which is set to debut early next year, could have a iPhone killing camera. Now, rumor has it that the top of the line S24 will have a 50 megapixel 3X telephoto lens. Now, this is a big deal considering that the current S24 flagship phone has a 10 megapixel 3X zoom. So, so far, the telephoto lens is the only one expected to get an upgrade in this new model. The next S24 phone should feature the same 200 megapixel primary camera in the same 10X zoom uh, periscope lens. But with the smartphone wars going on between Apple and Android, you can bet the S24 will have some other upgrades as well. Now, the rumor mill points to things like longer battery life, faster charging, higher resolution display, and upgraded chipset as likely new features of the phone. Now, the next uh, iPhone, which is set to debut next month, isn't solid either. Reports are that it features a double stack 48 megapixel sensor, better battery life, and USB-C port, among many goodies. And of course, time will tell uh, what Apple and Samsung have in store for us, so stay tuned for some further updates. Now, remember when Apple unleashed the original M1 chip just a few years ago? It was definitely a game changer, to say the least. Then came the M2 chip was improved performance even further. Now that chip was released back in 2022 in the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Mini, and some other models. Now this year, the M2 Pro Max Ultra chipsets came out, but progress can't be contained, right? So even though the M2 chips are still new, Apple has the M3 versions in the works. Now the low end and mid range chips, the M3, M3 Pro, and the M3 Max will offer modest performance uh, improvements over the current M2 chip options. But what I want to focus on here, though, is the M3 Ultra. Now, the top of the line M3 Ultra chipset will start with 32 CPU cores and 64 GPU cores, but the higher end M3 uh, chip will boost that to 80 GPU cores. So, for reference, the current top end M2 Ultra chipset has 24 core CPU in 76 core GPU. With more power comes more memory options as well. So right now you can get a MacBook Pro with 16, 32, 64, and 96 gigabytes of memory. Now rumor has it that the M3 powered Macs will have 36 and 48 gigabyte options as well. Now it's expected that the M3 chips will arrive in October of this year and the Pro and Max versions will come later in 2024. So if you want to Mac with the M3 Ultra chipset, you're probably going to have to wait to 2025. Now, considering how good the M1 chips still perform in these computers, I can only imagine how the M3 powered Mac will be able to handle things or heavy lifting tasks like uh, photo and video editing. So this is very exciting news for those of us that really depend on our computers to do a lot of that heavy lifting. You know what isn't heavy lifting though? liking this video. It doesn't require a lot of energy. It certainly doesn't require any monetary output. And it's a good deed that makes you feel good and makes me feel good at the same time. Now, having said that, what are you waiting for? Give that like button a little love and attention. I appreciate it so much as it helps this channel out absolutely tremendously. Now, let's get back on to the news. 
Now each year, Expert Imaging and Sound Association hands out awards like the best full frame camera, best telephoto lens, and best content creator camera, and, and so forth. But the big award goes to the camera of the year, and this year, as we kind of hinted or talked about a little bit earlier, the camera is the Nikon Z8, and I can't say I'm a surprise either. We've discussed the Z8 in length in past episodes, including its incredible performance as a baby Z9. We've also discussed sales figures for the Z8, which, hey, let's be real here, are off the charts. Now, the Z8 hasn't been without issues as there's been a couple recalls regarding manufacturing problems, but nevertheless, the Z8 is a killer camera with high-end capabilities in a small package that people just can't get enough of. Now, Nikon's Z 85 millimeter F 1.2 S also took Portrait Lens of the Year trophy, while the Z 400 millimeter F 4.5 VRS took home top honors in the telephoto, or I'm sorry, the super telephoto lens category. Now, other notable awards include the Fujifilm X-H2, which was named the best APS-C camera, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II, which was named the best full-frame camera, and the Sony ZV-E1, which was named the best content creator. Now, the lens of the year went to the Sony uh, FE 20 70 millimeter F4 G. Now, there were tons of other awards given out, so if you want a complete list, uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link down in the description below so you can go check out all of those. But friends, that is it for this uh, Photography Talk episode. Thank you for tuning in, and hey, we'll see you next time. <laughs>